Hi everybody and welcome back to the shop. So today I've got a fun little project. It's simple, it's practical, it's a butter knife. Now I'm not reinventing the wheel on this one. This particular butter knife I've had for many years and it's such a perfect design so I'm just going to copy this shape which is what I did for this one. Now I've made multiple butter knives over the years, uh, all different shapes and sizes. It has a bit of an edge on one side, kind of a little bit of a knife edge. You can't really go too sharp with wood. So what makes this project so perfect is it allows us to utilize some scrap wood. Now the first thing, the most important part when you're going to make this project is choosing the wood. Now what I mean more specifically is the wood that's going to come into co contact with your food. So I, I recommend keeping it very simple. Um, most domestic hardwoods, say maple, cherry, walnut. Um, I see utensils made out of acacia. Now I don't personally recommend, but you see lots of um, uh, kitchen utensils made out of bamboo. I don't care for bamboo as much because it tends to get really dried out very well, very much. It tends to get dried out and it gets kind of splintery and stuff. So to me, the go-to is always cherry. That's what I made this one out of. And I like cherry because the grain is so dense, it's very smooth, and it almost kind of like work hardens. The more you use it, it seems to be a little more resilient each time. Now, part of this video is to showcase a tool. Let me get it. So I picked up this tool and this whole project we're gonna use out of this one tool, the one by 30 belt sander from Harbor Freight. Now I wanted to make a quick note and basically a huge thank you because this is made possible by viewers like you watching my videos. So with the revenue I was able to get through uh, YouTube, I was able to purchase this. So let's get this unboxed and let's get to uh, making a butter knife. Okay, I thought I would interject really quick. The point of this video is not about this sander, but I am going to use it for this video. I just thought it'd be worth mentioning that, as you saw, I had to look in the manual. It did literally nothing for me. I had to kind of figure out how everything went together on my own. I did my best to square it up. You know, it's, it's, it's what you'd expect. It's not precise, but for the money, you know, it looks like it's gonna do very well. It's got dust collection. That's what I was attaching on the, the back here, and there's one on the side. Now, I may not hook up my uh, vacuum to it. These are pretty small. I'm going to need to get a little adapter to uh, bring the size down um, to fit. A little noisy, 
but um, I think I need to make a little bit of adjustments on this. It feels like it's a little tight. Um, I'm going to do that off camera and let's get to the rest of the video. Okay, so we've got our scrap wood together. Now, if you're looking at a good place to get these locally, um, you can go to Home Depot. And on the trim aisle, or the baseboard molding aisle, there's usually a little section that has like walnut, ash, um, oak, and, and cherry, as well as like popular and some other stuff. So that's where I got this cherry originally. Now this is Bacote, and these happen to already have a hole in it. Now that's another option you can do. Usually when you make knives, you pin them. Now on this one I did, because this is more of a prototype, um, I don't like the way it turned out, so I'm not going to pin this, and one reason is because Bacote is such an awesome looking wood that I don't want to diminish its looks by having a hole in there, even if I put something cool like brass or something in there, or a contrasting wood. Now one benefit though, is once you've got your two scales, you want to keep them together because the first thing we need to do before we even get to the knife is we're going to shape the end where it meets the blade kind of like here, you know, I have a little slight taper. And the reason for that is because once you've cut this glue together, there's no shaping this without damaging the blade itself. So one advantage to having a pin is then you can put a pin through here and help keep these from sliding around. Cause I'm gonna wrap tape around this and then we'll shape the end. And then from there, we'll go on to gluing. Okay, we got the scales, um, edges rounded, and as you saw, I changed the belt. Boy, that was the challenge. This is definitely not easy to change belts on. So I'm kind of glad that I'm making this using this uh, sander so we can see just the good and the bad, the ugly about it. So anyhow, okay, I got the scale profile on the end done. I went to a 150, or was it 150? Excuse me, 120 grit as a finishing. Um, now we can glue the scales onto the blade itself. Now when it comes to gluing the scale, you have multiple choices. You can use pretty much any wood glue if you want. Now exotic woods tend to have, um, or a lot of them have, uh, natural oils in them and can make gluing not as reliable. Typically what you just do is just before you glue it, you want to wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. However, what I like to do is use epoxy when gluing exotics. Okay, so as we take this out of the clamps, now comes the fun part. And one thing I would like to point out is, while I purposely did not put pins into it, I would recommend the pins for alignment's sake, especially if you do something like I did where I had a little bit of this curve. This one's not gonna be perfect because unfortunately, especially with epoxy, when you wanna clamp it, it really wants to slide around. So that's one, reason to argue you should put pins in but i think overall i'm gonna be a lot happier not ha marking up this wood Okay, now that I've made an absolute mess, as you can tell, I need some dust collection. So we got the rough shape. All I did was smooth these scales 
to the edge of the blade itself. So now we can go ahead and draw our shape or determine how we want it. Now this one's gonna be a lot thicker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of treat this like I would a knife handle and I'm gonna try to round this whole thing evenly. Won't be as flat as the other one. Just do something a little bit different. Okay, well, I've got the uh, first round of sanding done. Um, the belt is a one, what is this, a 120. And I've gone over it with a 150 to get rid of all of the remaining sanding marks, round any sharp edges, corners. So the knife is basically shaped to the final look that I'm trying to achieve. And then from there now, I'll go through all of the uh, different grits of sandpaper. Now what's nice about this particular wood here, let me give you a little bit of a close up here. Um, what's really nice about this particular wood is you actually could get this to a polish. So even though you probably don't need to go more than 320 on the entire thing, I may take the handle part to 400, even maybe 600. We'll see how it goes. Um, but it shines it pretty nice just on its own. And then from there we'll put oil on it and the knife is done. Okay, well, the sanding is finished. I took the handle down to 600. I went up to uh, 320 on the blade part. Really not necessary, I feel, to go any further on the blade. Um, but let me give you a close-up. You can see just how much of a sheen you're getting even with just 600. Yeah, so it's pretty impressive. Like I said, I love this wood for any kind of scales, like if you're doing knives and stuff, Bacote is the way to go. Okay, so our next step is let's oil this up, put it to the test, and then at the end of this video, um, we'll discuss a little bit my first impressions on using this belt sander. Okay, let's talk about the combination sander now real quick. This is not going to be a full review since this is the first time I've used this combination sander or any combination sander of this style um, before, which is one reason why I didn't give any techniques on shaping the knife because this is the first time I've ever used this style. I've always used the longer 36 inch length type uh, belt sanders and I actually prefer that. I'm just really comfortable with it. I'm sure after time, I would probably be even more comfortable with this. Now, right off the bat, I will say, you do need some kind of dust collection. You can see the huge mess I made, but more importantly, it gets everywhere. And I should have hooked something up. What I was realizing too, when I changed the belt, as I'll show you, it's gonna be hard to tell in here to clean out a little bit, but the uh, dust will just clog up in here if you don't have some kind of ventilation going. So one suggestion would be, if you're not gonna use ventilation, you might wanna leave this open, even though it'll make an even bigger mess. But I should have hooked up and just got an adapter or made something. So I'm gonna work on that for future projects. Um, but other than that, let's see. Uh, one thing I didn't like is, I don't like this little plate. I'm not sure what you would just call this part, this little table. And the only reason I didn't like it is it's got all these little teeny grooves in here. So of course you got something that sawdust is piling up into. 
Now with ventilation, maybe that wouldn't be such an issue, but I think this should be completely smooth. This, you're gonna be doing a lot of like shaping because when I was trying to move my piece around, sometimes I felt like I was catching on these edges of these grooves. Other than that though, the power was good. I was, I was actually afraid that it'd be underpowered and whenever I was applying pressure that I would bog down this motor. No, that didn't happen at all. So I was pleasantly surprised about that. It's got these good little rubber feet on here that keep it from walking around, which that's also nice because even my combination sander, I'd put that on the table here on the workbench and it would tend to want to walk around so I'd have to always clamp it down. I'm going to have some future projects using this again so then I can do a final review and maybe some tips and tricks that might come along the way as I want to maybe make some modifications and stuff. So other than that, I hope you like this video and until next time, you take care.